we're going to talk about object-based audio. And this may be a new concept for some folks. And so I want to give it a little bit of a soft introduction, talking about the delivery of sounds with a higher level of precision spatially to these kinds of endpoints that can receive this greater spatial precision and render that for you uh, using processing that's available in these operating systems at these endpoints. Object-based audio is really an evolution on the sound formats that you know and love. If you grew up on mono or stereo sound, whether you landed right in the middle of surround sound, 5171, or you've just come to it recently with the addition of height channels in a 7.1.4 configuration. I think of object-based audio as that evolution where now instead of relying on specifically a channel-based format for the deliver of, of that spatial precision, we can actually maintain that spatial precision all the way through the authoring pipeline in WISE so that it can be delivered to those endpoints with the most precision. In a broad overview of this pipeline, the main things to keep in mind is that for many of us, nothing will change. If you're not authoring for a object-based endpoint, uh, you'll still mix and produce sounds in WISE the way you always have. And we think there's some features of this that will actually help you do that better. But fundamentally, whether you're authoring for audio objects or not, the main thing to take away here is that we've allowed for the ability to render to a channel-based format, which we call pass-through, a channel-based format that could be virtualized. Uh, you might know it as a spatialized bed, as well as the ability to pass through individual audio objects with all of their positioning information and other metadata that's associated with it so that it can be rendered positionally by the endpoint in the best possible way. And in some cases, they can even position it better using these HRTF profiles that may be tailored to you and the way that you hear. So the five areas that we're going to talk about and go hands-on with are the authoring audio preferences. So that's the preferences you have in WISE. The system audio device update. This is a cross-platform system audio device. Audio bus status, it helps communicate what a bus is doing, how it's processing sounds. We're going to go hands-on with profiling and profile some audio objects, see what that looks like, as well as authoring custom metadata. So let's dig deep and see what happens. First part of this that we're going to talk about are these authoring audio preferences. And these are the initialization settings that the WISE authoring uses when you're playing back sounds in it. And going hands on with that, this is what it looks like. So up in the audio menu, we've got a main mix channel configuration, which is again that channel based configuration that may or may not be spatialized depending on whether your endpoint can handle it, as well as authoring audio preferences. And these preferences are only used by WISE authoring. So these are not used by your game engine. These are not used by your game. And one of the important pieces of this when we talk about the audio object pipeline is enabling system audio objects. So each endpoint has a number of system audio objects that it can support. Depending on what application is reserving those system audio objects, you want to make sure that you have them where you need them. And so in our case, we're going to be relying on the game engine to reserve those system audio objects. So I've got them disabled here in the authoring application. We can talk more about how objects flow. And one of the big pieces of that is the system audio device. And this is a new cross-platform audio device that talks between the endpoint and WISE and is really that final stage before WISE hands off 
the audio to a platform or endpoint in a configuration that it can handle. So these system audio devices uh, historically have not had a lot of control through the authoring application. We're going to talk about some of those new settings that for the first time are available to you within the authoring. Historically, kind of buried under the hood in the SDK, talk to your programmer, negotiate those properties. But we're bringing that directly into the authoring application so you have control, you have the authoring per platform capability, as well as a whole bunch of profiling that you can do in there. Well, let's go hand it on. We've got a series of properties over here that you can configure for the system audio device. The other cool thing is we've put your audio devices right here at the top of the audio tab in the Project Explorer. So as sound flows out of the master mixer hierarchy to the master audio bus, arrives at the audio device where it makes decisions about how to format that for the endpoint. We can profile from the device editor what's happening either at runtime or in the authoring application, as well as properties and metering for the different areas. So I'll dig a little bit deeper on these properties just to give you an idea of what that's like. Allow 3D audio gives us the ability to if they're available, deliver 3D audio formatted sounds across these three different areas, the, the main mix and objects. The pass-through is, is a non-spatialized, you can think of it as an unfiltered path to an endpoint. And we'll, we'll see a little bit more about that as we go hands-on. We can set configurations for the headphone and speaker configurations for main mix. So when those are the output settings that have been decided either in the audio settings of the platform, we have an ability to allow system audio objects if they're available or not. And so kind of dig a little deeper on what that means, some minimum requirements. And lastly, we've added the ability to place effects in the audio device as the final stage, specifically, we will put the mastering suite into this slot. This will replace where the mastering suite sits and we'll talk a little more about that later. I'm super excited to actually connect to the game and show you this working, uh, but before we do, bus status. So there's a couple places where we have added the ability to understand what's happening in an audio bus. We have a set of icons that represent different configurations in the master mixer hierarchy. We have some new configurations that I'll talk you through here in a second, as well as bus status. So understanding what's happening in a bus. Is it mixing? Is it processing? Are audio objects being passed through? So we'll go a little more hands-on with that with the demo here in a minute. It wouldn't be wise if you couldn't draw a full circle around your workflow and profile these things as they're happening in the game. And so we have a whole new suite of views you may have seen a little bit of and we'll go deeper into. And these views help us understand what's happening with audio objects from different perspectives. We have a 3D view, we have our metadata, and we can understand the flow of audio objects through the pipeline using these new profiling views. And lastly, we have custom metadata that can be authored throughout the pipeline. But let's go hands-on. So we talked about the system audio device. We gave a quick overview of these different bus status icons. We have an unresolved bus. This is the master audio bus. It's been updated with metering for these three different categories of sound, the main mix, pass-through, and objects. And we can see that we have a couple other kinds of buses here. We have a mixing bus, and that's denoted by this little cool curvy wave thing. And this is mixing. Well, why is it mixing? We have a new bus status section on the bus that when you hover over it will tell you why it's mixing. And in this case, it's because it has an explicit bus configuration. It's a channel-based bus. And we can see that the bus configuration is set to 7.1. And up here, that is 
true. In the case of this master audio bus where we actually don't know, it's because it's defined by the device. And so when we connect to a game at runtime, we'll actually be able to resolve that and know what that master audio bus configuration is. And it's processing because it's a master bus, right? Uh, and right now it's, it's configured for a 2.0 based on the device. Another kind of bus here is just what we call a simple bus. It is not doing any processing, not doing any mixing, but it's rolling right up to its parent and will continue to flow throughout the master mixer hierarchy. That's a little bit about bus status. We talked a little bit about the system audio device. I think it's time to start pushing some sounds around and flipping some switches back and forth. So let's do that. I got the Wise Audio Lab, uh, some seagulls there, and let's go ahead and start profiling over here in Wise. We now see that our main mix has a two channel orientation. Uh, we can also look here on the master audio bus. This is all true. The configuration is 2.0. Uh, we, we are running a 7.1 config into it, and it's getting down mixed to 2.0 for that. Uh, okay, but this is cool, right? Uh, but I thought we were talking about object-based audio. So the first thing we actually need to do there to enable that, uh, and remember, I've already toggled off the um, system audio objects in the authoring application. But the next piece of that is to actually go to the spatial sound setting in Windows and select Windows Sonic for headphones. This is a default spatial profile that comes with Windows 10. And toggle that and you can see immediately that something has changed. Maybe you even heard it change. But essentially, connected to this Unreal project, WISE has reinitialized in order to reflect the changes that we just made. So now you can see the main mix has a multi-channel output. And again, you're saying to yourself, but I only have two speakers. And what's happening there is that that main mix is being virtualized in that 714 configuration and binauralized by the spatializer in the Windows Sonic environment. Right now, we don't have anything going through the pass-through. The pass-through is a 2.0 unfiltered way to play sound that will not be spatialized in this case. So again, I can toggle this on and off and and you can immediately see and maybe even hear the results of that. Okay, so that was cool, but we still don't see any objects here. What we can see is we can see that 3D audio is active. Uh, let's flip it again. Is it active? No. Is it active? Yes. Cool. And we also have the pass-through active these system audio objects, so those things I was talking about that, that your endpoint has at the ready under circumstances where they've been enabled. And in this case, we can see that we have 111 available system audio objects from this spatialization profile. We're not using any right now. Uh, the main mix configuration is what the endpoint is asking for is a 714 configuration. Pass-through configuration is 2.0. Again, the endpoint configuration is uh, 714 is what it's asking for for that main mix. I think all we got to do now is get some objects over here. So let's go. If we can think about audio objects as sounds and their position, then what we really need to do is we need to make sure that that positioning is preserved all the way to the master audio bus so that it a sound and its position can be delivered to that spatializer in order to, to put it in the right place. And so we'll start looking down the hierarchy to see where sounds might be losing their position because of mix down. So in the case of this binaural bus, where we've set an explicit channel configuration to 7.1, what we've done is we've actually taken all that rich positioning information for each sound and we've rendered it to a 7.1 channel configuration. And so 
we have rendered that information and it doesn't flow through to the endpoint for any additional object-based processing. So one simple way to unlock objects and allow them to flow is to just change the bus configuration. And so you can see we've added a couple new configurations here. We have the same as main mix. So again, if you want to send something to the main mix to, uh, to either be mixed in that configuration that, that's set in the audio device or to be spatialized by the endpoint, you can do that here. Same as pass-through mix. Again, maybe you've got sounds in your project like music that you actually don't want to be filtered by any spatial processing. So that's your same as pass-through mix. And lastly, we have this audio objects bus configuration. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip that. You might've heard a little bit of sound change and reflected in the meter, we're seeing now the mono metering for each of the sounds that are, are arriving to this bus. If we go to the master audio bus, we can see this as well. The meter for the master audio bus here is showing the audio objects that are flowing to it as well as metering for the audio device, how those are being received. So wow, what is going on? Let's take a look at the profiling for this and try to understand that better. Something that you may have seen kind of moving around over here is the audio object list. And this is the first of the new profiling windows that I want to talk about. The first thing is you have a list of the audio buses and you can see those have the same iconography to describe what kind of bus they are, as well as a list of the audio objects that are being created. So we can simply select either a sound or a group of sounds and we can begin to see in this 3D object viewer the movement of those. And so we can see that these fountain splashes are being turned into objects and rendered by the object renderer. You even get a little bit of information here. The green halo is actually the spread value of those audio objects. And I think I could do something kind of fun. Should I do a little loop? Um, Kind of cool. All right. The large green circle on the face is actually the center of the fountain. And so the closer you get to that, the bigger that becomes because it has a spread based on distance. Let's take a look at that. So back to Wise, let's find my fountain center. Oh, there it is. Cool. And let me get that up in the properties. Let me look at the positioning for it. And it's on the attenuation fountain. Let me go grab that. Yeah. Okay. And we can see the spread for that here represented by the curve based on distance. We're kind of about midway in there. And if we change this curve, we actually change the the spread of that, and you can see the reaction of the 3D audio object viewer. Uh, so a lot of uh, capability there to be able to see what's happening with audio objects, how they're being positioned and spread around. Another piece of the profiling suite that we're bringing to WISE 21.1 is this audio object metadata tab and audio object metering. We're basically metering the selection of an audio object in the audio object list, as well as profiling the metadata information for that. And if I said metadata like 100 times now, what is metadata really? Well, we just show you. Uh, and metadata is something that's always existed in WISE as 3D position, azimuth, distance, right? These are properties of a sound that we get from the game engine to help position sound in the world or to render that sound. And so that's metadata. The focus, the spread percent, the spatialization type. These are types of metadata that you can author in WISE. 
that when you deliver to an audio object renderer, an endpoint that can receive that information and position these sounds for the best possible result, you really can reach a greater level of fidelity than is available in a channel-based format. The limitations of number of speakers go away when you're using a virtualized rendering of them. And so for the first time, we're just clearing the way to be able to deliver that higher level of fidelity all the way to the endpoint that knows best how to render it based on your settings, based on your HRTF profile, or based on your chosen spatialization settings. The last piece here is what we call the WISE system output settings. And this is a custom piece of metadata that's associated with the sound. And we can look a little bit into how to author that. Over to the fountain that we've been working on. What we can see is that it's comprised of a bunch of different sounds. And we can see that those sounds are currently being rendered as audio objects. And new to WISE 21.1 is the metadata tab. So we have this metadata that has been added, which we saw over in the metadata for this sound. But right now, the mix behavior is just to use the default behavior. And for the fountain, let's say that we wanted just to switch things up and we actually wanted to mix it to the pass-through without any spatialization. But in order to do that, we're actually gonna to need to start and stop these sounds. And if we come back, now we can see that these sounds are now being routed through the pass-through. And the trick there is, is that when a sound is started, its metadata is communicated, and that is held onto and preserved while that sound is playing. So in the case of the fountain, it's always looping, so it never has a chance to pass that metadata back along. We could take a different case, like the ball thrower, and you can see that's piling up the audio objects. So these are, these are also objects. And back here in our authoring, we can actually flip the switch for that, and objects that are rendered after will have new metadata behavior. So let's go ahead and add that system default custom and let's mix those to main back here and we can now see that those sounds are being rendered to the main mix we did it audio objects they're happening we're delivering them to you to get your hands around it creatively and to make some cool decisions about how you want them to work and we're really interested to get your feedback about it we hope that you register for the beta there is a, a full circle workflow that we are empowering people with to begin to explore this object-based audio future that has started to emerge over the past years and, and really is, is landing squarely today with the technology that we're bringing to the next full version of WISE.